Kia ora. Kia ora. And welcome back to Video Drones. And if it's your first time, hi, nice to see you. I'm Han Hart. And I'm Nick Hart. And we review movies. That's what we do, if you didn't know. And you're in for a special treat today because we've been doing our top 10 horror films of all time in honour of the upcoming Sight and Sound top 100 films of all time, which they only do once top, a decade. Top 10. Top 10? Oh, it's top Great, 10. Gr it's called greatest, Top 10 Greatest Films of All Time. Really? Yeah. Oh, um, I actually thought but, it was but, top 100. But they get, they get a lot of people. They invite a lot of directors mm. and film critics to all choose their favorite top 10 and then they kind of work it out like what it, the votes based on the votes what the, the actual top 10 but in the uh, December it was not the December issue because there's a separate December issue but then they're doing the winter issue which, which comes out on December 5th and that'll have the top 10 but it'll also have you can actually see like each person's top 10 oh, separately so it's pretty cool good yeah so, so yeah. that's why we've been doing this it's a pretty yeah. exciting event, and we'll certainly react to what we think of the mm. top ten. We'll definitely do a video. Yep. There better be a freaking horror on there is all I can say. Well, I can tell you already, there's definitely going to be one that you haven't seen, and I haven't seen, called Let's Scare Jess Jessica to Death, because um, Sight and Sound mm. um, published, a, a, like, it wasn't the top ten, but it was just the, the guy who ch had chosen that. I can't remember his name. Maybe a British guy saying that that was one of his favourite films, and he's voted for that again and he's quite curious to see if that film is going to be higher up on the list but it was like something like 300 and, or 890th film or something um, because you know no one else had voted, voted for it i think horror is a really like maligned genre and I, I don't see why it doesn't have the same respect that mm. other genres have because we're snooty we like us we, we yeah. like cinema we're cinema files we we really really just everything about cinema is something we're excited about and Nick's extremely well read and I'm extremely well watched. <laughs> I watch a lot and I think about a lot and I've written about a lot of, done a lot of movie reviews over my life mm. and um, really, you know, we've done film school and stuff, you know. Uh, but we still think that horror is, we, it's our favourite genre. I think that the horror, the genre itself is usually a lot more diverse than other genres, except for sci-fi. Sci-fi is also very good. And it also, quite often they're dealing with quite low budgets, so they have to be a lot more creative. Yeah. And I just think um, in terms of engaging with film, I think horror is really exceptional and exciting in that. It's the most pure genre of cinema, in my mm -hmm. opinion. It's the most cinematic genre. Um, That's a big call. Yeah. yeah. I've heard a lot of people say that. Good. A lot of, a lot of filmmakers say that. Yeah. So we're really trying to help normalise the fact that we think that horror deserves all the accolades, it deserves all the Academy mm. Awards, it deserves the recognition that I think it's been overlooked for so long and quite often people will rate horror films really it never low. Will, unfortunately, but, 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 but a lot of great directors love horror, like Scorsese mm -hmm. talks about a lot of horrors that he watches, mm -hmm. he, he watches all the new horrors coming out because mm. he's constantly like... Um, saying how he loves this new director or that new director. He's so, so he's cool. very supportive. He's awesome. Yeah. he's In fact, he's one of the most important directors around for uh, educating people around film. Like he's mm. released so many documentaries about American cinema and about uh, Italian neorealist cinema and things like that. And he's just turned 80, actually. So um, he's, uh, yeah, it's r a ripe time to revisit his films. May he live a hundred years or more, old yeah. Scorsese. He's a very cool guy. So, yeah, Nick, I've just done my top ten, so you can watch that. It'll be on the thing. <laughs> and Nick's going to do his top ten horror films of all time, which is, yeah, yes. like picking your favourite child, because but, like they're like our favourite films. Definitely. But Hannah is going to help me, because I'm mm. not as good at talking as her. No, you are. <laughs> You're, Nick's more eloquent and well-read and knows more words about it. I study sure. cinema study. Cinema studies at university, mm. so maybe that's a little bit. But I only did that for a couple of years, so. so. And Nick's written word is just like, oh, yeah. like he's just an amazing, amazing, Thank amazing you. writer. I'm like, damn, you're very, you're yeah. Very I do. Eloquent. I have a column here in Christchurch mm. called Thrash and Escalate. Yeah. Mm. In an art, in an art magazine, which is pretty special. Mm. But yeah, Nick's got amazing way with words and really good taste in movies. Very, very good taste. So we're going to start with his number ten and move his way up to number one. Number ten is actually two films, um, oh, it and it's a bit of a controversial decision. I've chosen Ringu, which was actually just Ring. Ring. <laughs> people have 
the producers or whoever called Ringu to differentiate it. Um, I think when it was released in America, uh, maybe. So but, weird, though, yeah. Yeah, so, some, but, somehow. Um, and uh, my other choice is The Ring, the American remake. Yeah. Which I actually, like, I definitely wouldn't have said that back in the day, but over the years it's grown and grown on me. Mm. Um, I used to um, put it on uh, just when I was lying in bed wanting to go to sleep so I could, without the sound on, just so I could look at it because it made me so... Um, it felt made me feel so comfortable, which is weird. <laughs> I was just looking up some trivia about it, and um, they s said that the director chose those green colours to make it as kind of vile and putrid mm. as possible and make it as unsettling as possible. Um, so it's weird that I chose It's weird that you like this. I feel comfortable. It's my, my security blanket. Yeah. <laughs> and they also lit each scene in a way that none of the characters would have any shadows. Just to make it really sort of interesting, off, which is pretty cool. That is, I didn't know that. That's and really I cool. also learned that they offered it to David Lynch to direct, and he turned it down, of course. Oh, um, I love to see but that. But that would have been imagine that. <laughs> what the that would be amazing. <laughs> but he, he has said he has said that he just doesn't understand Japanese culture at all. Which is so weird because I think like a lot about him is very Japanese, like just, mm. just a lot. I just I just don't understand how yeah, he has that perspective. It's very confusing to me. I, I mean, I place him up there with other great Japanese directors. This was something similar to me, and but no, he doesn't. Apparently, I feel like it. he doesn't understand any. Thinks that he doesn't understand any culture because he also did that short film, The Cowboy and the Frenchman. Yeah, that was so which is weird. Quite funny. So see it on YouTube if you want to. Yeah, it's, check it out. Harry Dean Stanton's in it, and um, Jack Nance as well. It's quite funny. It's a comedy, really. Um, yeah, it's so weird. I like it. It's, for, it's There's little elements that you kind of see popping up in the return, I too, I think. Yeah, yeah. The pretty ladies and all. And I, I'm normally a real, like, oh, the original is the best one. Don't, don't even go there with remakes. But, yeah, I admit this American remake is pretty damn good. It's, it's way, pretty good. It's way more cinematic. And, yeah. Um, I mean, what? Gore, Gore Verbinski directed it, who isn't a great director. Well, he, he is a great director, but he's just gotten into this horrible habit of doing all these um, um, Pirates of the Caribbean films. Oh, is that him? Yeah, well, actually, I don't... Maybe he didn't do all of the sequels, but, yeah, he did the first one, maybe the second one. Um, mm. And he's... Yeah, and he did The Lone Ranger. Just a lot of films that I don't, really don't like. Oh, that was dead! But he, he did do... Um, Curious. What's it called now? Um, a Cure for Wellness, which is mm. pretty good. I mean, it, it wasn't as good as... The Ring, but it was, it, again, visually beautiful, mm. beautiful film, um, and good performances mm. by Dane DeHaan and Mia Goth. But yeah, I, I love The Ring. Um, it's got a Kiwi in it as well. Like, mm. That hunky guy, he's Kiwi. That's Martin right. Martin Henderson. We're all babes over here. And an Australian, Naomi Watts, in, yeah. the, in the lead role. Um, Kid's good too, creepy kid. Yeah, Does a good yeah. job, really good yeah, job. It's... So yeah, I love them both. Mm. I love Hideo Nakata's films um mm. dark water is really cool mm. as well so it's great. such a pity that he hasn't really kept directing no. like, um it's Sad. maybe he ha he has like he's he yeah his films are, aren't for easy to come by anyway no. and he hasn't really kept up with the horror i don't think yeah. which is a real pity mm. but anyway um my number nine film is seven mm. which i almost don't see as a horror these days like a pure horror because it's more of a crime Horror, I guess. It definitely is how horror aspects. Mm. I guess, I don't know, yeah, that's kind of tricky though. Yeah. So, but anyway, it's always going to be. Pretty my, horrific. It's always going to be my favourite David Fincher film. Yeah. Um, I just, the way it looks, I'm, I'm very I caught up on the way things are shot, and that film is shot by my favourite living cinematographer, Darius Conji. Oh, that stuff is so good. Yeah. I mean, think of um, City of Lost Children. And I think he did Delicatessen mm, as well. He is um, a master. And he more recently did um, the Nicholas Winning Refn series, Too Old to Die Young, yeah. um, which oh, just looks so amazing. Good. It's incredible. So good. Um, uh. Unfortunately, he didn't do Nicholas Winning Refn's next series, oh. um, Copenhagen Cowboy, no, because, because he literally couldn't because of COVID. So that was, oh, it was all. Is that the reason, the only reason um, he shot did that um, series in Copenhagen was because he couldn't get out of there for COVID. He would have mm. definitely done something in the States. In fact, I think his next mm. film is Maniac Cop remake, which I really, really want to <laughs> see. That'll be dope. Yeah. Wow. Have, do, have you seen the first Maniac Cop? I think what? I have. Maybe. 
we'll have to watch it. I thought I had. It's, it's pretty, very entertaining. I mean, they're mm. not the best films ever made, but they're, they're like exploitation films, really. A lot of fun. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, good good choice. Very good choice. So, so Seven, yeah, I, David Fincher, I mm. love his films. Um, I do love Zodiac. Mm. Um, I mean, I love all of them, really. Maybe some less than others, but... Um, yeah. It looks so cool, and it's all like rainy. It's at night, which Nick loves. Nick loves rain. Mm. He loves nighttime. It's got nighttime and rain. Yep. It's got that really kind of gloomy aesthetic, but it's also very lush and rich and gorgeous. But the seven deadly sins. It's got I, Kevin Bacon. I no, love Kevin Dan, Bacon. Kevin. Kevin Spacey. Spacey. Kevin Bacon. Who's just been um, what's let off that? that Apparently, trial. he didn't do what he was accused of doing. One person. So I think there are more people that have accused him. So see. see what the next trial. Um, yeah. Is in store. He's creepy. He's creepy. Man. Yeah, he's very good in that film. And who's the who's who plays the um, older cop? Um, oh, Morgan Freeman. Morgan Freeman. He's amazing. I, yeah. You just really can't beat that, you know. And Brad Pitt being really, really good. And yeah. Gwyneth Paltrow, who I can't <laughs> stand. I like what happens. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, it's got one of the best endings of of any film ever made. Yeah, yeah. we're not, we're not going to spoil it if you haven't seen it. If you haven't seen it, come on, where you been? But you've got to be able to stomach quite a lot of brutality because it's pretty fucked up. Yeah. Yeah, it De is. Definitely. Yeah. Um, so the next one is Martyrs by P Pascal Laurier. <laughs> That's a L lot. Laurier. That's a lot, that movie. Mm, it's, lot. it's quite... It's quite intense. Yeah. Um, but, but, you know, like, I think a lot of people just focus on those really brutal scenes where she's being, like, w hit by the sort of guard. The, all the, pretty much all the scenes. The scenes that really bother me is when the family's getting, like, Yeah, right at the start. Yeah. But, but, I mean, the scene, okay, the scene that I was talking about where she's being hit, by it the guard. only lasts for, like, um, less than 10 minutes. But it feels like it goes on for... It's a long time. It feels like it goes on for like 45 minutes or something. Yeah. But it doesn't. Like, m my sort of favourite bit of the film is the f like the first 45 minutes where um, she's like... She's sort of has suffered trauma, one of the two main characters, and she has this almost like imaginary... It's not friend, but this imaginary kind of enemy that's kind of like tormenting her and it sort of um, manifests itself so it almost becomes real it's mm. very, it's really sad I find it really melancholic and it is a sad it's a very sad film but yeah I, I love that film and he's n unfortunately never lived up to the promise that that film showed and it's influenced by some very cool things I think Lovecraft may he may even have had a dedication at the end maybe to mm. Dario Argento and Lovecraft or Poe Maybe I've forgotten all. I don't think it's very Lovecraftian. Who it is, but no, no, I'm just saying that. Maybe Poe. That he was influenced by those well, people. Though. Yeah. Yeah. It's the first. Nick told me about this genre called New French Extremity, which I'd never heard of, and then he introduced me to Martyrs. That was quite. It's quite harrowing. Watch the practical mm. effects though are absolutely exceptional, and I kind of didn't. I just was like, what was the point of that? That was so gratuitous. But in retrospect. If you watch it it's again, quite interesting. I think you'll probably hear a slightly no, different No, I, 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 when I first started, I was like, what was the point of doing that? Like, why did they make that movie that just seems like excessively violent and gruesome? So but actually, no, like there's something to it. It's quite philosophical. We don't, I won't say exactly what happens, but the, the ending where the, the title of the film is revealed, mm. that's um, revealed. I think that's like a really beautiful um, sort of twist. Yeah, it is. Yeah. I agree. I love it. Yeah. But it's yeah, it's definitely like one of the more extreme mm. horror films out there. Definitely. So don't go blundering into it. All those French ones are. You didn't really like um, Inside the first time you watched it either. I still don't think I like that one. That one's a bit much for me. I watched it with my friend Ahmed um, like a year, or t year and a half ago. And I was kind of shocked by how, how like the first time I could only focus on the horror and how kind of cruel it was. Mm. But the next time I watched it i knew what was coming so i focused on the filmmaking and it was actually amazing like it was really see, really yeah, clever it was. but it's just mm, apparently there was a similar thing that actually happened in real life which is also very disturbing so it is yep. it's not totally like bizarre because stuff like this actually happened yeah Anyway, number seven? Number seven is Bram Stoker's Dracula. Dun -dun -dun -dun. Which I love that film. It's I mean, that's probably 
one of the like few most gorgeous films ever made. Mm. Um, Francis Ford Coppola mm. decided to make do everything in camera for that film. Apart from, I mean, this was like early nineties, so he couldn't really do much CGI anyway, because the the it wasn't really up to the level it is now. Although things like now when people use it. It doesn't look nearly as good as CG from the nineties. Yeah, it's so, weird. Yeah, Think of Terminator Two. Really, yeah, Terminator Two was kind of like, why don't they just stick with that level? Because that was really good. Yeah. No, I think it looks great. The practical effects are next level. They really are. cool. Some really cool creature effects. Yeah. It's got the most amazing soundtrack, which has been totally used and reused by other people since. Yeah, so you hear it in trailers a lot. That was the first. I think it was the Chronos. Was that? No, that's the Requiem for a Dream. Who was it? Yeah. I think so. they did Requiem, definitely. Yeah, I can't um, remember who did the score, but it's you know, like a quite classical opera. I can't remember almost. his name. He's like a um, Polish composer, I mm. think. It's um, rich, rich, rich soundtrack, a very really big part of, a kind of like a character almost. Yeah. In the film. It's a beautiful score. It's such a cool score. And it's, yeah, it's been just, if, if you think, oh, that's a score I've heard before. Well, this is actually the first place it came from. Yeah. I saw this film when it came out, the movies, actually, when I was like 11 or 12 or something. Jesus. And, um, it was a, I think it was a, an hour 16, maybe, mm. and they, I went with my friend, Paul, who's turned into a horrible person yeah. lately. I he's been, he's a bit notorious, that. actually, um, wait, in New Zealand. Yeah, yeah he's he pretty is. well known and he's not very well liked. He buys properties and yeah. s sells them. Like, what is it, house flipping or something? It's yes, called. he's a property investor and he also will, like, get he's New Zealand... He's a millionaire Zealand... now. He's a millionaire, but he'll get New Zealand on air to fund his stupid, shitty videos for his stupid, shitty music. Um, he'll get He'll get <laughs> funding for that when other artists who are better but not as poppy don't mm. get that kind of funding. So it's kind of like a big fucking fuck you to the um, music community when he does things like that because, mm. yeah, funding's hard to come by in New Zealand. He's just, he's just a jerk for so many reasons. He thinks he's a punk. Ha! Yeah. He's not a punk. Punks are not fucking landowners. He had a band called nah. Rub Rubicon, and he told me around the time oh, so that he was only doing it to cash in on the Blink-182 craze at the time. Yeah. This is it all, really. Um, I sound very jaded saying all these nasty things. Oh, but he's just but the he, worst. But he did this. I've got this kind of put into context. He, like, he, I mean, when we were that age, and he said, you know, let's have some fun or something, and he rung up uh, this sort of Chinese fish and chip shop down the road, and ordered like 20 scoops of something and then we biked down and or walked down or whatever and and went across the road and watched as no one turned up to pick up all these things and the, the look of sort of despair on the faces of the people who worked there and he thought that was fun i just don't understand that at all He's a psychopath. So awful. Or maybe a sociopath, if I'm being nice. So I went to the movies so with him. Up, I went with what him disgusting to person. see this film, and they wouldn't let him in um, because he looks maybe a, younger than I was looked. And so he went off and played video games, and I went. I decided to still go and see it. Mm -hmm. And I'm glad I did because it was such an amazing experience. And, yeah. Um, yeah, one that I'll never forget. I love that film. I'd love to have seen it on the big screen. It's like the only romance that I really so like. It's so romantic. It's so, it's actually super, super, super romantic. But I like it. I don't normally like romances, but this is the romance. And Mike mm. McKnowledge did a fantastic graphic novel version of it that I just still, like the images are seared into me. Did a really, really good job on that. Anthony Hopkins is amazing. Uh, um, what's his face? Johnny... Uh, the... Tom Waits. No, no. Tom Waits is... Yeah, Renfield's. Yeah. Then I think that actually is what got me interested in Tom Waits was seeing his performance as Renfield. I just watched the thing with Gary Oldman and he said that yeah. if he didn't get the lead role, he he would have played Renfield. Oh, he said that he, he, that's who he imagined himself playing. It's one of my favourite roles of, of Gary Oldman's, which is saying a lot because he's such a fantastic actor. You know, who's the who's the guy that was like you know like who's the guy that played Mina's husband? Harker, um, yeah. Keanu Reeves. Yeah, he's so bad. Yeah. He sucks. He, he just thinks sucks. he's bad too. Like so he's bad. quite embarrassed of that performance. He's got this terrible accent and he's really stiff and he just is so out of place there, especially because my own writer is running rings around him. And Anthony Hopkins yeah. is this deranged kind of like vampire hunter who's really fantastic and over the top. And Gary Oldman is just, just so cool. And yeah, Keanu Reeves is just like the worst but it's okay he's the weakest part of the whole film and it's kind of almost <laughs> funny in a way mm. but yeah there's so many um, the costumes oh, who's the costume designer she is amazing Ico, that lady 
I've forgotten her last name. Aika is something. She Basha or something. I, I don't know. She's an amazing costume designer. Yeah. Absolute she is. queen of costume design. Oh, I love, love, love oh, yeah. the armory um, and stuff in it. Uh, Aiko Ishi Ishioka. Ishioka. It's close, sort of. Aiko Ishioka. Yeah. She is a goddess. I love her work mm. so much. She hasn't done that many films. I think she did um, The Cell as well. Oh, which you can kind yeah, of it looks so tell. Good. I love the way that film looks so yeah. much. It's actually a really cool film. should probably put it on my honourable mentions, yeah. Mm. By the way, The Cell, really good. Mm -hmm. So good. Yes. Um, so number six is Mother. A very underrated film. So I, it's gonna. Underrated. It, it's like um, that other one that we were just talking about. Event Horizon. Yeah, it's gonna develop a cult following mm. and be sort of, you know, be reappraised in years to come. I think. Yeah, in fact, it, it's been slept on. I think. I was just watching um, the, the press conference for the Whale by Darren Aronofsky, and this idiotic um, journalist said said something about. Um, is this this film's going to be your big comeback? And I was thinking, Mother is, what? in my opinion, Mother is his big was his big comeback. Uh, it's like so good after films like Noah and other films okay, that right. he'd that done, was, which was weren't really good. I think Mother, Mother was my favourite film that he's made, and then mm. Requiem after that one. But it's a big call. But I think, I, yeah, uh, Scorsese when Mother came out, he wrote a big one-page defence. Of it, saying how amazing it was. It's so. so amazing, and it's so seeped in like biblical law as well. There's a lot of analogies in that film, and they're pretty obvious analogies. So mm. I don't know why people would have missed that, but people were dumb. They're really dumb if they didn't see how amazing this film was. It's it's high art. Yeah. It's really horrifying. It's very horrifying. It's very suspenseful. Like the suspense just keeps de developing over the, mm. the course of the film. You just feel and, like you can't breathe. The last like. Um, half an hour is just insane yeah. in a good way <laughs> it's, it's so so well done visually it's exceptional all the performances are exceptional i actually did rehab about two years ago and i sh this film was on netflix and i showed it to about five other people in their separate time so i was re-watching the film over and over and they all loved it but they were quite terrified it's mm. maybe not the best film to show people that are coming off drugs yeah, nah, I don't think so. No, that would really mess me up. That's actually one of the few films that like has a scene in it that I actually can't stand and I have to cover my ears. There's a certain sound that happens. Yeah, I don't want to. Yeah, just <laughs> mm, it sounds in films that can really, really mess me up, and I honestly think this film really pushes beyond the boundaries of um, what I can handle seeing, and yeah, it, it does that. It's very, very disturbing, but yeah, incredibly well done. Yes. So, yeah. So, um, and, number five, and I was just gonna say also that Jennifer Lawrence, um, she's good in that, yeah, really and good. Darren Aronofsky were in a relationship <laughs> during the making that film, and then <laughs> afterwards, she did, she had to break up with Darren because he just wouldn't stop talking about that film, he wouldn't let it go. I think actors, you know, they make a film and then they move on to the next film, but directors, they spend a few years with each film. This is sort of a justification for him, but he just he was obsessed with reading um with reading reviews of the film mm. and sort of um you know, responding to reviews and she just got sick of that. I can understand though, it must have been really frustrating. It's like when David Lynch's Firewalk with me didn't do very well, like that's just crippling, hmm. you know. I can understand because because he made something so amazing. It was such a gift, and for it to be received so poorly, I can understand why he was kind of obsessed with it. Hmm. I would actually be very understanding of that. Yeah. And I just think it's just ahead of its time, unfortunately. Yeah, totally. Fortunately for us, but not fortunately just for him. <laughs> yeah, you just wait. That film is gonna be yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna get the love it deserves one day, hopefully. So number five for me is audition by <laughs> Mika <laughs> Takashi. <laughs> Kitty, 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 kitty. Yes, I kitty, love that kitty. film. I, I love, I love that it <laughs> sets itself up as like a, a Japanese rom com mm. in the first hour, and then shit turns up upside down in the last. It is not a rom com. It's just yeah, nope. I love it so much. Um, very cool aesthetic and mm. um, great performance. Yeah. And yeah, <laughs> it's he, it's my favorite Mikei Takashi film. I mm. wish that he he had made more horror films, but he kind of he's he just sort of makes genre films. Like lately, he's done sort of um, sort of space. Oh, 
sci-fi horrors. He did a he did a um a live action version of um JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, if that's what it's called. Yeah, yeah. JoJo. Yeah. And um he just yeah, he does a lot of those sort of films. Um I just wish that he'd do like sort of pure horror films again. Yeah, because they really are the brand. they're the best ones. I he think. did one missed call, which isn't bad, but not nearly as. Uh... No, I like that. It's quite creepy. Yeah, yeah it's, I it's really good. like that actually. But yeah. not on the same level as no, audition. No, it's almost more like a teen horror. Yeah, yeah. Compared to a very adult one, which is audition. Definitely. Such a good story about kind of revenge and insanity and like kind of also targeting like innocent people, but maybe should have couldn't have put themselves in certain circumstances yeah yeah i think i think it's kind of a warning he's no the angel world. of that main character yeah that's true he isn't you find out but yeah i think it's like a bit of a warning against online dating as well maybe mm. just a little bit you could take it that way these days yeah yeah um so my number four well all of my next four entries are all kind of number ones mm. for me like i just found it really hard to number these four films in particular mm. um <clears throat> so number four is david cronenberg's videodrome um but i do i almost <laughs> love that none the other as well yeah i was gonna say um, videodrome is kind of most horror-y outside the fly you know, wasn't but, it? Well, the but dead ringers, dead ringers is, very is horror. sort of a horror film it's sort it of is. a drama horror yeah it's a very sad film it's definitely um, horror in there yeah. yeah but i love crash as well mm. those three films are my favorite cronenberg films but i love all i love every film he's made Mm. Maybe not so much the dead zone, which you like. I like the dead zone, but I didn't like Spider. That one was just really depressing. I, I, yeah, with dead I zone. Like I just don't like Seven King very much. And I love Howard Shaw, who's done every other soundtrack for David Cronenberg. So it's, mm. yeah, maybe those are the reasons. I love Christopher Walken. Yeah, he's much. so great in that. So I do. I like the film, but I just yeah. don't like it as much as the other ones. Oh. Um, but yeah, Videodrome is like, I <sighs> always say this, it's almost like a like a mystical feeling when I'm watching that, that film and yeah. I yeah like I could, it's a, it's something that I can just re-watch and re-watch like I could watch it if, each day mm. you know? yeah and, I don't think you could ever get tired of this film mm. no there's oh it's just so much to look at the atmosphere is so exceptional no one does that that, that Cronenberg atmosphere like Cronenberg he's mm. such a gift it's it's like my current sort of um feeling for the film has sort of grown over the years it probably mm. wouldn't have been my favorite film um back then like I almost found it a bit too 70s looking and I know it wasn't made in the 70s mm. but it, but maybe it just sort of had a hangover from the mm -hmm. 70s visually and the production design and things like that but but no now I just I adore everything about it and yeah I'm very happy to consider it one of my favorite films ever mm. made not just a favorite horror film very cool writing and story as well but like existence they have great stories mm. great writing yes yeah. I, I love Cronenberg's pre 2000 films mm. the most really like most of his fans I think yeah um yeah, yeah and existence so is a great film so as well very underrated I think. yeah yeah it's weird how he doesn't get the adoration that he so deserves mm. and number three for me is one that was on Hannah's top five yeah. the thing i mm. love this film and i didn't see it until maybe when i was 18 or something wow. not because i wasn't allowed to but just because i mean i was watching i saw the exorcist when i was seven and so from then on mm. i was just watching horror films every day i even had a babysitter who my mother had told i wasn't allowed to watch horror films but i talked her into like um picking up horror vhs's at the store every day on i give her lists and um, we'd both kind of really gleefully enjoy these horror films. And I'd That's... stand next to the window to see when my mother was coming, driving up the drive. And we'd quickly get the film out of the VHS player. And, and put on what, Land Before Time or something like, that. something like that. That's so, she enabled you. Yeah, she did. That's it's kind of simultaneously incredibly badass and also really fucked up to do as a babysitter, I've got to say. Yes. Wow. She was the wife of um, this guy that my mother worked with. At, oh. social, at social welfare wins uh, back in the day oh. um oh. but yeah I, I i love the thing so much i mean i love john carpenter's films mm. um you know he's done a lot of good films i love in the mouth of madness mm. and they live mm. um lot, lots of his films but this one is like so much better, so much better. than the other ones it's like on a whole different 
planet. Yeah, he was. He had a particularly good crew, mm. and um, particularly good cast mm. as well. And it was really well written, mm. and it was based on, you know, really good um, uh, film, the thing from another world. Um, actually, I just saw and Stan that, Winston did the effects. Um, no, what's his what's name? Um, Rob Bottin. Oh, Rob Bottin. Yeah. Oh, Rob's uh, the man. Yeah, he's amazing. Um, I just saw that uh, John Carpenter has said that he would love to do a, a film version of Dead Space, the game. What? I, I've never played it, so I don't play games, really. I like survival horror games. I like, horror horror like, games. I like so, Silent I do like Hell, games. I like playing games. I only like, really like survival horror endings. So, so is that a really cool game? Yeah, it's really scary. That would be a, a good Super match scary. for me. Yes, do it, John Carpenter. Mm. If you're watching, please, or anyone who knows him, please tell him. Please, please imagine please, please him directing it. like an Event Horizon style film. Oh. That would be perfect. Yeah. Yes. Um, Dreaming. That would yeah. be so wonderful. Um, so the thing we said a lot about the thing in the mm, other video. We did. So I probably don't need to keep singing its praises. But yeah, um, very important film to me. And. What's next? So the um, Exorcist. Two. The Exorcist. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, I'm kind of warping this t-shirt with my boobs, but I'm sure <laughs> Linda Blair would also understand because she's also busty and she short is. like me. But yeah, kind of warped it, but you can still sort of see. Mm. Yes. Isn't it great? I've got an Exorcist shirt as well. You do? That I, I wear as my nighttime shirt. Oh, it's such a friendly After I have a shower. Watch it night times. Yes. Yeah, it's such a cool shirt. It's all like lure and stuff. Yeah. But not, yeah, what a film. What, what a film. What an amazing film. film. It's like, it's, I mean... Mm. As much as it's a horror, it's a drama as well. Like it's very, very much a, a drama horror, and mm -hmm. um, it's sort of shot almost in a documentary style. Um, William Friedkin mm. used to make documentaries mm. earlier in his career in the sixties, I think. So he he kind of knows how to do that, have that sense of realism yeah. with his films, and I love that he um, used. You know pieces of music like um you know Penderecki and um mm. i don't like tubular bells as much but Weyburn is in there i love um, the score i had it on yeah. record it's very very cool that's cool it's very cool um yeah it's, i just love this film so much and i, I had mm. a quite a um uh scary i watched it when i was seven and was at my friend Corey's house and his mother told us we weren't allowed to watch this VHS copy that she had of it. Because it's fucking scary. Yeah. Totally not right for kids. And then she went to have a nap in the sunroom and we watched the film, of course, <laughs> really quietly. <laughs> we so she the shit out wouldn't of you. Wake, wake up. And we loved it. Yeah, but it was very scary. And then Corey, we went in to see why she hadn't woken up. And because it's a long film. Um, and he, we couldn't, he was like shaking her and she wouldn't wake up. And then it was weird because it seemed like this might have happened before. And then he went and got a baseball bat and like smashed it on her thighs like a few times and she, she didn't wake up. And then he went to the freezer and got ice packs out and then put it down in her pants, which I was like, well, what? And then she didn't wake up. And so then he went and called an ambulance and um, she had had a, an overdose, I think, from heroin. So that was pretty frightening. Um, and... I was obsessed with horror from that point on. <laughs> and I've always like <laughs> equated it with like yeah. with drug use and things after that. Yeah, yeah well, that's yeah. a really horrifying. And the scary, what's even scarier about it really is that he obviously she had told him, "If you can't mm. wake me out, try these things." Mm. And pull so she's regularly would totally. maybe pass out from heroin use, which is yeah so it, horrifying. It like, I don't even want to be drunk around my kids, you know, it like. It had happened multiple times, and oh, that's um, awful. my mother never let me go over there again. I don't know what's happened to Corey. Oh, that's um, so sad. But his his grandmother came over and yeah said to my mother that it's happened before, and she was really angry with with Corey's mother. Yeah, especially if it, not just your own son, but someone else's child there too. So there's yeah, there's wow. it's a, probably a big part of why that film is so important to me, and like mm. why it's, I think of it as one of my favorite films ever. For a lot of reasons and it ha it's interesting though because it really is like one of those great films mm. like it's it's absolutely amazing and like actually one of those films that i find very frightening um there's something about it that like i'm i'm scared to watch it 
because mm. it's just got that real sort of sense of evil um and it's psychological horror yeah. as well it's not a film like the ring that i could watch as i was going to sleep mm. like <laughs> no um because those are scary as well like he's a scary demon mm. captain howdy we've actually got a song called bot fly which references the exist very extensively. Mm. Mm. Friedkin, the director, was a bit of an asshole when he was making it. Mm. Like, um, I think he's sort of shooting guns to get reactions, and there was like a priest right at the end that had to be, be visibly shaken by this death of his friend, another priest. And um, Friedkin, it was like the, the last, it was like just before the sun came up and they needed to get the take while the, it was dark and this priest couldn't get the right tone and Friedkin went up to him and said do you trust me and he said of course and he like smacked him really hard across the face and that made him shake and he then he was mm. like action and made him do it in that moment well, and, adrenaline. and apparently he, he was very happy afterwards that he the priest was happy that he did it that way but mm. i don't know i don't think you need to do things like that and he also um linda blair permanently he, damaged her back from one of the scenes uh, as well Lin yeah i th think she did but also alan burston did from um like she was sort of in, in the corner of a room oh yeah she and, really knocked her head and there's this drawer that yeah. came like sort of flying towards her and and she sort of said you know bill i can't do this anymore william or whatever he was called you know the name of him um you know it's actually hurting my back and then um they he kind of said okay let's we'll do it a different way this time and then when he thought that ellen burston wasn't watching he said give it to her this time <laughs> to the effects guy and she could see him saying that and she's always told the story oh, and then it, it was like even worse this time and she you said can see she gets hurt yeah. she was not only um had a back injury at that time but it's never gone away like over the years so that's pretty intense really like the, a lot of the things about the film though. the 70s that got away with <laughs> mistreating Anything. their actors i guess but like yeah. clockwork orange and some pretty crazy stuff that happens in that so you're going to give some honourable mentions before you go for your number one? Oh, yes. One? Good idea. Um, so, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3. Yeah, Dream Warriors. I love that film. Um, amazing practical effects. And mm. In fact, maybe the, the best, one of the best practical effects films I was, around. Yeah, I was like, holy shit, how come I haven't seen this? These practical effects are wild. They're so good, so mm. creative. I was so impressed. Yes. Yeah. And yeah. cool early performance by Patricia Arquette. Mm, such a babe. As well. And some really interesting people who wrote it. Mm. I think that um, um, apart from Wes Craven's New Nightmare, I think that that's one of the only sort of sequels that um, Wes Craven had a hand in with his writing mm. at that time. And um, what's his name? The guy that um, wrote the Wild, Wild Palms series. He also mm. did, and Frank Darabont, whose film Buried Alive we just watched last night, but you fell asleep to it. The guy, the guy who did The Mist. Ah, uh, yeah. Um, and the I Walking love the Dead, mist. Walking Dead as well. Yeah, he's great. Um, so yeah, some interesting people involved in that, and Evil Dead Two. Mm -hmm. Um, I mm -hmm. love that film so mm -hmm. much. Um, Dead Eye, it's okay. Yes. Yeah, some cool camera moves in that film. It's, yeah, pretty incredible. And better than the first one and the third one, in my opinion. Mm. It's like the perfect spot, mm. really. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you sweet know, spot. The first one was too low budget. The third one was too big budget, really. But yeah, Sam Raimi's amazing. Dragon Meter Hell was great. I love how he's like really the only main character for a lot of the film. Um, you know, there are too many people. What's his name again? Bruce. Bruce Campbell. <laughs> he's great. Mm. They shot a book, an Evil Dead series in New Zealand, just mm. up in the other island. It's, it's got Lucy Lawless in it, who played Xena. Yeah. It's great. The practical effects are awesome. I was like, yes, he's using practical effects. It's very, very cool. You should totally check it out. Yeah. I liked it a lot. I thought it was cool. And Bruce Campbell's great. He's so funny. He's such a dick. I love him. <laughs> <laughs> Reminds me of my uncle. <laughs> wow. yeah. um, Antichrist by Lars von Trier. Yes. I like very good choice. I mean, it isn't, it isn't my favourite, but I, I just wanted to get some Lars. It's proper horror. Yeah, Lars, yeah. I, and that's a very J-horror influence film. Um, and Tarkovsky. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Cool influences. I mean, very and they're not just what we think, but I know Lars von Trier said that he was watching a lot of J-horror before making that film. So, mm. um, And The Hunger, mm. Tony Scott's first film. I 
very beautiful cool yeah. film visually David like, Bowie playing a mortal vampire getting old yeah he used to go sad, every night um, to that bridge big bridge in New York and like um, scream over the edge of the bridge just to try and get his voice really ravenous so you can kind of hear it wow. um, in the film is yeah was cool was a cool kind of method acting with yeah. very cool um and yeah tony scott had like his brother ridley had made a lot of commercials mm. before that film and you can talk you can see it in billowing that film. curtains and Lots doves. Of doves. <laughs> it's, it's their thing the scott brothers scott brother thing very sad that he threw himself off a bridge actually tony scott tony scott yeah, yeah. he's such a good director it's really sad mm. um society by brian Usner. Mm. i love that film <laughs> That is like the perfect anti-capitalist film, in my opinion. Yeah, yeah. I love it. I yeah, love it's it. very subversive politically. It's oh, cool. it's so like, it's my mentality to a T, really. They live in um, society, plus the practical effects. They're like, mm. you will not believe I get there. Yeah. Well, just wait till the last, like, five, ten minutes. It goes bonkers. So I also like snappy. his other films, The Dentist and The Dentist oh, too. So They're pretty cool. Um, perfect Blue. Yes, yes, it's yes. Very cool film. Very cool. Animated. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, Candyman. Yes. Very cool film too. Oh, so good. Love Alien Candyman. Three, which mm -hmm. a lot. I mean, I Absolutely. love I love Alien and I love Aliens, but they give so much love that I and a lot of people hate on Alien Three. I no, just no, no. I think it's no. very special. I think they hate on it mainly because David Fincher has like. Um, sort of disowned it because he had such a horrible time making it mm. in a well editing it well and making it in a similar way to david lynch in june yeah you know so a lot of people think oh it's got to be bad because he doesn't like it but it's actually i think it's a great film very you, dark yeah you can great. watch um there was a time in the ninth late 90s i think when they released uh, re-released all those films from the series and they went and asked all of the directors if they wanted to edit director's cuts and he was the only person that just sort of said, fuck off, I don't want to have anything to do with it. Aww. But they went and like looked at his notes for the original edit and they re-edited it sort of on his behalf, I guess, like oh, for, wow. for him. Interesting. So you can actually see close to the film that he wanted to make. Obviously, it wouldn't be as good as him editing himself. But, um, but yeah, I think the original editor, wow. Terry Rawlings, did it. And um, it's, I think that version is really really special it's so cool and very dark and it was written the story by vincent ward yeah who, who went, to, went to the same university as i did um he's very bleak yeah. <laughs> a lot of kiwi writers are exceedingly bleak his film the navigator and mm, um so dark. vigil um, oh vigil so depressing cool i don't like that movie and but he also did heaven heaven something about like it's got like oh uh, um what uh, well, dreams yeah. may come yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is also kind of really good film about depression and mental illness mm. as well, as well as being very pretty and a lot. And his original idea for Alien 3 was to set it on a wooden planet. Mm. I love that idea What a cool so concept, much. right? I wish they'd done that. wish they had. Uh, but yeah, I love I love that film. Um, I love the aesthetic of it. And um, mm. the soundtrack um, by Elliot Goldenthal, who did Heat as well, around the same time. Mm. It was an amazing score. I think that he's one of these composers that is sort of... Just a, an amazing classical composer, really, yeah. rather than just a score composer. Yeah, um, yeah. So any film that gets him on board is lucky, in my view. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and Hell, Hellbound, Hellraiser too. Mm. I love that film very much. I, we talked about that more in the last video. You know, I think it's a bit underrated. Totally underrated, yeah. And Dead Ringers, which we talked about, about a little bit too. Dead Ringers. So there are my honourable mentions. And there they are so very many honorable. more that I could say. I know, it's but, so hard picking. But that's what I just thought of. And like, if you ask me next week, it would probably be a totally different set of films because I'm always t changing my ideas on what are the best horror films. Adapting and evolving, that's what we do. Yes. And I think I may have um, talked about this film, my number one, when we were talking about the greatest storm films ever made. Mm, I um, think you did, yeah. But I have to say it again because I just adore it. Suspiria. Yay! The original um, 1977 Dario Argento film. Dario Argento's best film. It's a gorgeous film. Yeah. I wish more films were like this film. But his wife was involved in writing this. And it's apparently based on a true story. D Daria Nicolodi. She was, She's so cool. It like, was based uh, on her grandmother's cool stories that she told mm -hmm. her. 
in sort of like early 20th century, um, I don't know where, if it was in Italy or where it was, but she studied at a ballet school, I think. There might have been some other type of school, but they, yeah, apparently it was run by witches. And Wee, so witches. that, ma that made Dario's ears prick up, mm -hmm. and I think that's why they wrote the script. But yeah, yeah she was very much involved in that. And she, her name is on IMDb. She is, is. She is credited. Oh, good. That. I've always someone... heard that she was. Okay, so good, good. Someone told us that um she wasn't, but she's yeah, she, and she's been involved in a lot of other films that he made, but mm. he did sort of kill her off more <laughs> violently each time. He's so. such a weirdo. Yeah, but then he he also like <laughs> had his daughter being raped in one of his of if not more than one films. He has some interesting He's, ideas of boundaries. He does. He really does. But it's just, yeah, like you say, Suspiria is easily his best film. Oh, I like yeah. Tina Bray a lot too, but nowhere near as good as Suspiria. The way that it looks, the neon, mm. like I love the neon, and this film is the neon. The, the colours in this film, I actually got to see it on the big screen for the first time mm. at the Incredibly Strange Film Festival, which I used to review, which was a freaking cool festival. And I was just like, what, what is this? It actually scared me. I actually found it quite mm. frightening. There's just like, it's a certain this has a kind mood, of horror. Very oppressive. Yeah, kind of really. Thing, yeah. And like, there's just like the gore in it, like the the, the, the viciousness of the murders, the kind of, per it feels quite personal, the way mm. that the people are killed. It's sort of yeah, yeah. yeah, there's it's it's quite ballet cruel dances. In some ways. It is, it is a very like cool. That girl film. who falls into the, the tiny wire. Little, little room of barbed wire. Yeah. Oh, it's like razor wire. Oh, that's You think she's just about escaping and she falls. Jumps out of this window and lands in this worst like razor wire. Room. It's horrible, so. horrible death. Um, I showed it to some friends and they thought it was they like didn't get it because it was dubbed. I laughed. Kind of, didn't yeah, I? I was really offended. I mean, like it's amazing because I absolutely adore this film too, and I had no idea that anybody else would love it as much as I did. And mm. I was like, thank goodness mm -hmm. we're on the same page with this film because I was really disappointed with my friends. But I think that they couldn't get their head around the, the sort of dubbing. There is some weird dubbing. It's shot in Italian, right? And then it's sort of English dubs. Yeah, yeah. But that's kind of, that's jello. Like, I didn't even know that that was a jello thing. It is a thing, bit jarring at first, but yeah, jello, yeah. a lot of jello is um, dubbed. And I love it. I love the dubbing. I love it. I love, I love it aesthetic. in this film. I, it, sometimes hmm. it annoys me a little bit, but I don't even know. You can like watch it thing. in Italian, though. I think I'd, I'd really like to see it in Italian. Mm. Yeah, I really, really, really want to see it in Italian. I think mm. I might have once, and I really liked it. But I don't know. It, 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 it's just so amazing it's such a work of art it's so mm. beautiful it's so yes, well acted and I can't see it but Goblin Goblin soundtrack la 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 yeah yeah it's that a cool just soundtrack. runs around in my head I, I got the soundtrack after seeing it too I think back in the day and I just love it missed seeing Goblin when they came to New Zealand because mm. they didn't play in the South Island and I, I was wish broke, I'd gone but, up oh, it yeah. so good so that's my <gasps> top 10 well done Yes. We've, we've, we've given you our top 10 horror films of all yeah. time. For I, now. I think um, our next top 10 video, which will be <laughs> the last one we do before we our do our greatest films greatest. of all time, is going to be top 10 most overrated directors, which we're yeah. going to have a lot of fun doing. <laughs> yes, we're going to piss off lots of people, lots of fanboys and fangirls. <laughs> sorry about it, but also not sorry. We've hmm. talked a lot about the directors that we love. It's pretty clear. Who we tend to lean towards the We're very passionate great. about we're loving and hating. And things. hating. So we're going to give a hate video. We're going to just hate, yeah. rate. <laughs> Lots of hate speech. Lots of hate speech. It's, gonna, it's just going to annoy so many people. But we do not care. Hmm. But yeah, there's a lot of overrated directors that need to be called out for how shit they really are. Yeah. And we're going to do it. So yeah, I see you again. Thanks for watching. Let us know what your top 10 Yes. Horror movies are, or just horror movies that you like, horror movies that you don't like, whether you agree, whether you disagree. Let's have a discussion. Hmm. And we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. This thing, fucking thing. <laughs>